Toy Girl Land. A fighting fury we're from Toy Girl Land. In any weather, you will see us with a grin, a risky head and skin. like a kick in the guts, you know. You're part of a team, or you're like a spoke in a wheel that's not pulling its weight. The wind didn't help. It's no excuse, maggots. Tigers went down today, and that's the end of the penny section. Now, our, our banner is the last thing they see before they run onto the ground. Well, no, well, they're already on the ground, but it's like the last thing they see before they run through it. Into more the, the centre of the ground. Yeah, and if... um. If our words or our slogans don't don't hit them here, if it doesn't put fire in the belly, then we've failed, I suppose. Failed. Big time. Yeah. Look at that. And that hurts. But you've got to put it behind you, and that's past history now, and we've just got to focus on future history. That's, that's what it's all about. Yep. That's what it's all about. We just have to look at next week now. It all starts again down at the club on Monday. You know, you don't have to be crazy to be in the Richmond cheer squad, but hey, it doesn't hurt. Yeah, you can say that again. Right. What went wrong? Aye, there were a breeze. But it were a fucking zephyr. It were a zephyr. I mean to say, did anyone check flags on top of Ponsford stand? They're your air traffic control. It's common sense. Ralphie, what were you doing out there? Eh? Blimey, the wind changed. Shut up, maggots. The banner needed more air pockets. Oh, God. Shirley, I don't want to hear fucking air pockets. Every week. Air pockets. Look, it was disappointing for us, sure. We had some problems with the banner, some tearing of the crepe paper, but that's part and parcel of the game. I'll bounce it back. You were bloody loose cannons. That was a problem. You were all bloody loose cannons out there. Now, you can't blame <coughs> the players for losing if we can't get the fucking banner right. We set a standard. Okay, it begins with us. Ever since he joined up with us lot here, he's just fiddling like a house on fire. Oh, don't get me wrong, he can go off. Well, I won't let the AFL push me around. AFL or other clubs. As far as I'm concerned, AFL only exists so that Richmond Football Club have got a, a competition to play. That's right, that's all they're there for. Now, I'm not blaming anyone. Okay, but Ralphie, you've got to be man enough to stand up and admit you made a cock up out there. The wind changed. Pig's ass, the wind changed. Limey knows his trade. He's seen every game since 1979. Been here since back when I was playing in the VFA. Look, he knows the caper. You know, he's worked for cheer squads in England. He's been great for this club. And there's no doubting him as a leader. They all seem to really look up to him. He's a dead shit. Limey's all right. He's a professional. Stop, Benny! Just expects the best. He's full of shit. I mean, what's a fucking Zephyr, anyway? You know, he's worked in England. Having worked in England, closely involved with a number of clubs, starting with Grimsby Town and working my way up through the divisions to the Premier League. He was one of the Barmy Army. Manchester United. Ah. You see, we've got two types of fan in England, and Glynis will tell you this, she's been there. We've got your Mad Keen soccer fans, 
And then we just got your man fun. Mm. They just go for the fights. It's just magic to be part of something like this place. Um, my mum was pregnant with me during our premiership year in 1969, so it's in my blood. Um, she had me after the preliminary finals and was back the next week to see us take out the flag at the granny. So my dad reckons that the three most important things to happen that year were in order. Um, Richmond winning the premiership, me being born, and man landing on the moon. That's pretty good company, I reckon. I keep an eye on the slogans for the banners. Of course I do. It's part of operations. The club is ultimately responsible. For a family club, you wouldn't want anything underwater waving about in the breeze up there. Not that we have any problems. It's mostly things like eat them alive in 85. That was one of mine. And again, uh, eat them alive in 95. I wasn't here in the 70s. I suppose what I've brought two times is a knack for a bit of experience. I know when to get crowd going. I know when to pick moment. You know, whether, whether it's tigers or the, you know, eat them alive. You know, long or short version. It's like it's a bit of a science. Right? Well, I think what attracted me to AFL in, in first place were, were, were Banner. They don't have that in England. And, and rhyme on Banner. You know, and again, I think I've brought that two tigers. I've brought a knack for, for a rhyme. You know, we have a long history of it in England. You know, poets. I have. Words. With the kids, you, you've got to give them a bit of rope. The future of this club on and off the paddock is the youngsters, and they do try hard. Sometimes they go a bit astray, and that's where I come in. Fortunately, I'm not bad with a bit of rhyme. A touch of the banjo Pattersons. I pretty much wrote Saturday's slogan. You know, I'll, I'll pass it by upstairs, pass it by operations manager, but essentially, I'm left to my own devices. Saturdays was one of my best. <laughs> no question. We should have won. But Ralphie. Ralphie. Oh, Ralphie moved back home a year or so ago after the salmonella business at the meatworks. It was a bit much for him trying to live on his own and what, what with his commitments at the club and whatnot and. Lars. Just a, a different boy since his brother moved back. Really come out of his shell. He's a real little chatterbox now. Yeah, Richmond's, um, it's in my bones. It's, it's the same for all of us, like, um, Ralphie and Maggots, Glynis. We've all grown up with this club. And it, it's not just the game, it's, it's the people. Um, blokes like Ralphie, he's, um... So yeah, no, yeah, it's good. Ralphie's got some slogan ideas. It's not. He's trying to impress Shirley. Shut up. She does enough like you. Shut up, man. She does. I oh, love these footy. They both do. This was for the under nines, Richmond Rovers. He got best club man. And. Again, the under tens, back to back, best club man. The first time anyone had done that. And this was Ralphie's competitors medallion. I think they all got that as part of their subs, but he really earned it. Now, that is Richmond's little league trophy. What a day that was! They got done by five goals. Now. This is Lyle's Under 11's Most Tackles Award. Well, they never had that award before. Well, he, he couldn't kick or mark, but he's a little terrier in the packs. There's nothing like a sunburnt time slot. Oz at eight. Oz at eight. Right. Anyone not meant to be here, clear off. Official cheer squad only. Put wood in hall, Stewie. This is a bunch of crap, this, isn't it? Eh? Where do you think you are? Bloody la la la. Hmm? This is a bunch of crap that this club just can't afford. Now, you've created a right bloody controversial nightmare with this. Eh? 
Bloody, the, the League, the League are considering a fine for Saturday Slug. Okay, not only that, but you've exceeded AFL banner size stipulations. 25 by 60. Bloody basic. It's all very well, isn't it, carrying on like bloody pork chops when good times are here. Who's going to carry can for this? Eh? My bloody despair. You've brought the club into, into some right bloody bad disrepute with this. You write it, Lonnie. That's fucking priceless, that is. Doug Fry approved Whoa. it. the lot of you. Stewie. Don't fry approved oh, come it. Come on, Cleaners. Doesn't make it our fault. Stewie, come on, lad. Don't worry about it. Cleaners, stop sticking up for him. He wrote it. Stewie. Yeah, and he runs it by Doug, and Doug oh, approved God, God. it. Look, uh, Limey's explained what happened. He delegated to the wrong person, basically. But he should have known better than to let a slogan like that through. It was a bit over the top, it was a bit provocative. This football club's nothing but time for the league and its commissioners and the way they handle the running of our great game. I think we can smooth things over with them. It was just um, an unfortunate chain of events. We'll uh, go for something traditional this week, eat them alive. You know, something over those, uh, along those lines. Don't want to frighten the horses. 